Max versus Justin is a fight that was sought after, that was suggested by, that was in the magazines, that was in the articles, that was spoken into the microphones, that had innuendo around it. Never. Never. Nobody ever said, I want to see Max and Justin fight. Ever. Now, that, that fight's here, it's cool. That's cool. That's a cool thing. The fact that we're going to have a lineage to the BMF belt, like there's some cool things here. All respect for Max Holloway, but I don't know and I don't understand why UFC make this fight. Justin Gage versus Max Holloway, it's no make sense. I am not a fan of this fight for Max Holloway. Justin Gage right now seems to have found his stride on how he's fighting smart. They, they call him the human highlight for a reason. He will walk you down, he will take the shots, he will get rocked, he will get in trouble, whatever it is, but he will put it on you. When he does, it changes the way you fight. Sometimes changes your career. And I was talking to Habib about this dude. He's like, Henry, nobody has ever kicked me as hard as Justin Gage. He said, he said, I knew that when he kicked me that I could, I could not give him space. I decided to press a Justin Gaethje because that, that kick, I felt, I felt like I was kicked by a mule. I mean, crazy. I've heard this from multiple people. I wouldn't want to get kicked by Justin Gaethje, but that's the stuff that makes Justin Gaethje lethal as he's a wrestler. He's got heavy hands, but more than anything, He'll break his leg to, he'll break his own leg to make sure that your leg is broken. You know what I'm saying? Like he's that he, he's got that malice in him. I think Justin comes out and just eats his legs up. Eat his legs up to start with. Give him some hard, give him some hard leg, uh, leg kicks. I think Justin should definitely put an emphasis on taking away his mobility because that's, that's Max's money. His, his movement, his footwork, you know, and things like that. That's his money. So I think take his legs out. I, I was thinking leg kicks from the beginning, but I was thinking because more of the Yair Rodriguez. And, and yeah. Justin, to me, is going to be able to capitalize on those leg kicks a lot more so with the weight and the power behind it than someone like Yair, who he was sticking them out there, but they were quick and they were fast and they were repetitive. But one or two, I've, I've talked to fighters that have trained with him. I've talked to fighters that have fought him. And they said, it's, it's crazy that he kicks that hard. They're like, I've never been kicked this hard before. It's a risk, bro. It's a risk fighting the highlight. It's a risk. Name, name one time that someone came out of a Justin Gaethje fight un, unscathed. You know what yeah. I mean? So, you know, at the end of the day, this is a huge fight. That guy is dangerous everywhere. And I'm excited. You know, this is the kind of fights that just, like, intrigues me, gets me happy. You know, it gets me, like, when I don't want to get up, I think about who I'm fighting. I'm like, brother, you need to get to this gym now. You know, because this guy, this guy ain't sleeping. If I'm being honest with you, which unfortunately I always am, it's a weird little, every single every single opponent is going to bring something different that you're going to worry about. Um, with Poirier, it was, you know, his precision and power. With with Fiziev, it was his speed and his power. And, you know, those are scary. Those are scary. And being scared is something that really does make you work harder. Um, when I look at Max, it's not that I'm not scared of him because, again, like the worst way to lose is going to be to be overwhelmed and be, you know, consumed by his pressure in, in the middle, you know, on the world stage. That would be terrible. And so that's what's going to drive me. But, you know, not being scared is, you know, probably not a good thing. And I am scared, but I, I can't find fear in thinking about the fight. It's definitely Max and Gaethje is a fun fight. You know, I fought both of them twice. This is going to be a fun fight for the fans. I'm excited about it as a fan of the sport. Again, if I could bet, <laughs> yes, I respect both guys. Both guys are great fighters. I think I would put money on Max, just him being the dog. Um, I, I see a lot of people online saying that Max is going to be undersized and that man, Max is a big guy. You know, him and Gaethje probably walk around the same way. You know, the, Max, Max isn't a small guy. Um, in, the, in the striking, the timing of Max, his range, his durability. It, it's a coin toss, but I, if I was betting, I would bet Max. Now, when you've spent as much time as Dustin Poirier has with these guys, right, intimately in the octagon, absorbing punches to the face, feeling their strength, their durability, et cetera, et cetera, then you know, okay, he knows better than me. Of course he does. But also, his judgment might be clouded just a little bit. So, I don't know about this. I'm just saying, it's a little bit of amateur psychology here, but... It's possible that in the mind of Dustin Poirier, he doesn't want Justin Gagey to knock him out and then also get a victory over Max Holloway, a person that Poirier's also beaten. 
And in a weird roundabout way, and trust me, I know what I'm talking about. This is how we fighters think, okay? If Holloway beats Gagey, it makes Poirier look good, okay? It was like uh, when I first threw out the tweet in October, a lot of people was going crazy. Of course, you, there's some na naysayers saying of what happened because of the last time I went to 55 with the Poirier fight, the second one, and and I, it is what it is, you know. That, that's such a different. That's so years. That was so many years ago, you know. We're attacking this 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 time way more smart than what it is. No no excuses for that last time. I'm not making no excuses, but you know, I I have four or five years, whatever it is, of of just being a grown up, being smart, you know. And, and, and doing things the right way now. So, you know, at the end of the day, I just can't wait, you know. There's, there's always going to be naysayers, you know. This, this this sport, you're only as good as your last fight. So, you know, I go out there, do my thing at UFC 300, and, you know, <laughs> been doing what I've been doing my whole career, you know, just <laughs> proving the naysayers wrong. Uh, honestly, I don't want the people make upset, but this fight for... This is a useless fight for a useless belt and uh, nobody gains nothing from this fight, you know. Man, Gage, if now look, who have, I have two, three guys, Sarukian, Oliveira and Gage. But Sarukian and Oliveira, I beat them already, both of them. But I have Gage, you know, he deserves his fight for the title now. He's this is his, uh, you know, like good time for him. You know, he's show good performance last two fight, and uh, for the Holloway, he have already new uh, champion, and he can fight now with Tapuria. But you know, they put them each other. But I don't think I I don't know this fight for me. It's nothing. This and that. Why? Why Max? Why don't you just wait for Taporio? Why don't you just wait for? Why he should be fighting for? Uh, he should be fighting for the 55 against Islam, and blah blah blah. But I I thought not if I thought this whole time in my mind that if Taporio was to beat was to beat Volk in any way, he gets a Volk gets a direct rematch. Volk did enough work to earn himself a direct match. And everybody's like, oh yeah, but after the knockout and blah, blah, Volk stood earns it. He stood earns it. He did what he did. He has a bunch of title defensive. Just because he went up to a weight class and lost, I don't think it should affect him at, at, the, at his own weight class. So at the end of the day, I always thought that if Tapoya won, no matter what, I still would be waiting because Volk would get a direct rematch. I think that people do feel like, oh man, why is Max going up? Because Max is in a bit of a weird situation now in his division, but hey, I was there when this fight was getting made. This fight started to get made in December and the fight was being wanting to be made early. He's like, nope, let's give it time. Let's figure it out. It's a fantastic fight. It's a fight that I like in terms of if I'm a fan, but as a friend of both guys, I don't love it, but it is what it is. It's for the BMF title and who better, right? We had the Poirier versus Gaethje and now uh, we have Gaethje versus Holloway. It's a tremendous fight. Gaethje puts people away. They don't, they, you, you will not see Gaethje hold records for most punches thrown like a Max Holloway. All of his punches are, are dealt with like, they're with bad intentions. We have to keep that in mind because him going up a weight class, it does change. You're not gonna be fine a guy that's 5'6 like Alexander Volkanovsky. You're fine to do that 5'11. You're same height with a lot more power. Uh, listen, I know everybody likes to, 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 to talk about who's going to win, who's going to lose, but it's MMA, everything can happen. I would never count Max Holloway out. But I do think uh, this guy, you know, this could, be a, this could be a war. You know, this could be a battle of attrition. You know, if I can't find him, if I can't hurt him, then he, he never stops. And he's constantly creating angles and constantly creating pressure. And it could be a, could be a tough fight. Max is regarded by many to be the best boxer in the UFC and has made many top 10 guys look like they don't even belong there with them. Two of the all-time greats in their division, and this fight will be five rounds for the BMF title. I'll see you soon.